hi I'm Taylor of Taylor Lynn Crochet and today I'm going to be talking to you guys about something that's a little bit different than my normal stuff uh, if you guys follow me on Instagram you may have noticed I started selling things like stitch markers engraved pencils signs all kinds of cool things I'll pop some pictures up here so you guys can see what those things look like and you may be wondering how I was able to do that maybe where I've been buying my pencils or stitch markers and the really cool thing is I've actually been making them <laughs> um, I got a new tool for my business um, <laughs> also if you guys have been following me for a while you know I love to have all of the things I have sublimation I have a Cricut, I have now a Glowforge laser cutter, um, I have all the things. I'm a person who's tried every craft, who's done all the things, and I'm really, really excited about this one. This was a big financial investment for me, but I regret nothing. It was so good. Uh, if you guys are interested in buying your own Glowforge, if you use my affiliate link that's in the description box below, you can actually save up to $500 on your Glowforge. And then I also get a commission on that sale. So it helps you and it helps me. I use someone's um, affiliate link when I purchase mine. It saved me tons of money and I was really grateful for that. Um, but I wanna just talk to you about um, 16 different must-haves for a Glowforge. So when you get your Glowforge, what are 16 things that you need that it's gonna make getting right into laser cutting so much easier? And I'm gonna share those with you right now. Thing number one is a fan. And this is a fan that you buy separately. The Glowforge does have a built-in fan, but it's not super powerful. Um, I bought this um, fan right here off of Amazon and I am so glad that I did all of these things will be linked below affiliate links to all of my Amazon links you guys but this fan makes it so that my Glowforge operates a lot quieter the Glowforge fan is really really loud so this one is has more CFM and is quieter so it, it kind of doubles up it does more work at less volume the second thing on my list um, also has to do with the venting. Uh, these are probably the most boring things to talk about you guys, but they're really, really important and that's why they're first on my list, is a AC window vent. Um, it's like a tool, I'll pop a picture up right here. Basically what it does is, so right now in Michigan, it is like 15 degrees. So I open my window, I stick that piece of plastic in there um, and my vent goes out there's a little hole cut in the bottom perfectly sized for my vent and then I close my window up against that plastic right there and then what that does is so that instead of me having to vent it out and all the rest of my window being left open it keeps it from all the cold air and the snow and all the other things blowing in in my house and also keeps my heat from escaping um, so it helps you keep temperature control and just you know keep the wind and snow and rain and whatever else is going outside outside and keeping all your warm clean fresh air inside inside right thing number three is lens wipes and microfiber cloths so your glow forge will get very dirty especially if you're cutting materials like mdf um, or wood and stuff like that all of the sawdust from your laser engraving can cause your lenses to get really dirty and just the whole entire um body of the glowforge on the interior and 90 percent of those things can be cleaned with just a microfiber cloth a dry microfiber cloth and lens wipes um these are the lens wipes that i've been using a lot of people there's like a name brand one that a lot of people use um almost everyone suggests it this is the brand i've been using i've had zero problems thing number four paint pens or acrylic paint so when you engrave on things like acrylic a colored acrylic or clear acrylic and you want your design to show up even clearer, what you can do is leave the masking, the tape, the um, paper backing that was on there while you cut the laser, leave that on and fill in all the engraved spots with paint or a paint pen, let it dry and then remove the masking tape off the back and it'll have a really crisp, clean design that now you've filled in with paint so it pops when you show it. Thing number five is a plastic razor I got this plastic razor with like a hundred blades off of Amazon and at first I didn't think I needed this and I seen a few other Glowforge people's videos and they were like oh like these are really nice these are really nice and I was like I you know I haven't had any issues get them get them get them get them when you do a really small fine detailed engraved or scored item having that 
blade to just scrape across <laughs> the materials without damaging your acrylic or scratching your acrylic or anything like that, but getting all the masking off, you will save hours and hours of time. Please trust me, do not sleep on these. They're really, really affordable. I haven't even changed my blade even though they give you so many blades. 100% um, worth every penny I spent on it. Highly, highly, highly suggest you get this tool if you have a laser cutter of any sort. Needle pens. Um, I got this set of three needle pens from Amazon. Again, I got most of my things from Amazon. <laughs> um, I just love that they're quick shipping, you guys. I'm not necessarily a huge fan of Amazon, but the quick shipping gets me every time. But these needle pens are way nice. They're really, really, really nice. Um, and heavy duty and they come with regular pen like ink pen inserts that you take out and then they have the needle inserts separately and you click the back of the pen the needle pops out and then you use that to pick off the masking sometimes when you're doing the masking the razor's not working tape's not working you can't get it off using those little needles to pick off the edges of the masking is a lifesaver if i had to choose one of these tools out of all of the tools i've listed so far these needle pens would be like top two top two for sure um they're really 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 helpful and i just don't see how you could remove as much masking as i've had to remove on the back of my materials without this tool so highly highly suggest like i said these ones are very high quality they're very good they do have some more affordable options um but i really really like the ones that i got thing number seven is masking paper so you may be wondering like Taylor, you keep talking about removing masking. What is masking even, right? Masking is like a paper or plastic backing that goes on the back of your material to prevent scorch marks from getting on your stuff. So if I was cutting wood, if I did not mask it, you would see a little bit of burnout, um, a little bit of char on the back and the front of my item from the laser. If you mask it, the masking takes on the brunt of that and you don't have any char or burn marks on your item. Um, so I bought this masking paper from Amazon. It, I think it was like 10 or 12 inches high, which means that I can just stick it on and it will cover my whole sheet 100% in like one take. I slice it at the end, which is really, really, really nice. And then I just use a scraper to scrape it flat to make sure it's, there are no air bubbles. It's really, really important that you get your masking to stick really, really well because if your masking starts coming off in the middle of a cut, it can start your laser on fire. Um, so that's just one thing to be like thoughtful of is to make sure your masking is on very, very good. But the masking will save you, you know, it might take you an extra two or three minutes to do on the front end, but on the back end, you don't have to clean up any of your pieces or even throw away materials because you aren't able to get those chart marks off. The next thing on my list, thing number eight, is a fire extinguisher which makes sense I just talked about masking and how it can start fire sometimes. A fire extinguisher is a must. I have luckily not had to use mine. I got this little can one um, and I just have it right by my glow forge so that if there ever is a fire, I can douse it very quickly. Obviously, the longer you let a fire go or the bigger it gets, the more damage it can do to your glow forge. Um, most of the times you just want to turn off your laser and not open it to kind of starve it of oxygen if you can and the fire will put itself out but um just that is one of the things that glow forges and other laser cutters it can happen frequently i shouldn't say frequently it doesn't happen frequently but has happened to lots of people right um that's why you're supposed to stay in the room when you are cutting your stuff on your glow forge and whatnot but if your masking is on good and your glow forge is clean, you should not have any issues, but having the fire extinguisher there is a good just in case item to have um, to prevent any further damage. Thing number nine on my list is acrylic and wood and MDF and all the materials that you wanna cut. Um, I know it seems obvious, but when I first got my glow forge, I was thinking, oh, I can just cut wood, right? No, there's so many things that you can cut or engrave. Uh, I've seen people engrave on the back of like their MacBooks or their um, phones or their um, AirPod cases. They engrave their name and stuff like that. There are so many things that you can engrave on. As long as they're less than two inches thick, you can engrave on pretty much anything. Um, but I have found a lot of affordable acrylics on tons of different laser friendly websites. Uh, Etsy has a ton 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 of wood and acrylic sellers for specifically for laser cutters and glow forges and stuff like that um, but MDF is a really really affordable material it's great for making 
um, like test runs of something if you want to make something you're like oh I really would like to make this out of acrylic but I want to make sure it's gonna look how I want it to look kind of on NBF right um, I don't know there's tons of affordable options out there I'll make a whole video on where I get all of my materials all the places I bought from their prices their quality all of that for you guys in case you're wondering um, but obviously you're gonna want to stock up on all of the best materials the prettiest colors and all of those things before you get your glow forge so that when you get it you can get right into cutting if you do buy a glow forge and use my affiliate link you do get a like free starter kit where they send you tons of glow forge um, proof grade materials for free proof grade materials are awesome they cut really easy they fit in the bed perfectly the only problem with proof grade materials is when you go to buy them they cost five times sometimes five times more than what you can get those materials from other vendors so all proof grade materials are nice they already have all the cut settings are coded into the software and everything which is really great um the price tag is not so i love my proof grade materials i have i don't think i'll be buying any more um because i found some other awesome vendors but um yeah make sure you stock up on some cool things so that you can some cool materials so you can cut all the cool things when you get your glow forge the next thing on my list is gorilla tape um this is a duct tape that works really really good sometimes again when you cut something in really small fine detail and you're trying to get that masking off the back you can just stick a piece of gorilla tape all on the back rub it down real good and peel it off and it'll peel all the masking off for you another thing that i found really helpful with gorilla tape is sometimes i rip a little piece off and i stick it to my desk kind of like fold it under itself and have it sticking there and when i use my needle to pick things off i rub my needle pen on the tape to get all of the papers off of my needle and have it stick to the tape i do that most of the time when i am weeding things and taking the masking off of stuff and i find that really really helpful but gorilla tape is the only duct tape that i have found that's strong enough to pull off most masking not all masking but a lot of it it can handle it's easier on wood than it is acrylic um, the acrylic masking is on there like super tight, but that's where the blade or the needle comes in handy. The next thing on my list is Scotch's painter's tape. So while the big masking tape is really, really nice, sometimes one of two things happens. You just want to maybe engrave or cut something really small and you don't need to mask the whole piece. You can just stick a piece of tape along the top or wherever you want to engrave one or two pieces over in the corner and cut out your item, right? Um, the other situation is, is that some materials, the masking tape will not stick and you're the, the big masking tape and you do not know why it's not sticking and just some materials are easier to stick than others. I have found that in those situations where my big masking tape does not fit, my Scotch's painter's tape always sticks to the stuff. Um, so I have used that. You can literally line your whole sheet of material with Scotch's painter tape if you want to. It does take a lot of time. Um, they do sell thicker rolls of it. I think I have one that's two or three inches thick. But I use Scotch's painter tape for a lot of my smaller things or when I'm just testing out samples for my stitch markers and stuff like that. Um, but it's really, really, really handy. It's more affordable than a lot of other masking options. So I wanted to throw that one in there because it is, again, something I use almost on a daily basis when I use my Glowforge. And I think you guys will find it helpful as well. The next thing on my list is alcohol and alcohol wipes. Um, when I engraved my pencils, it was something that was really hard to mask. Um, some things you may find that masking is not worth it because you're going to be engraving something really, really small. You're going to have a million little pieces. It's going to take a long time. Some things are just not mask friendly. Um, and you may decide to go without masking. And the only way that I have found to get the charring or the like little bit of brown or yellow residue off of those items is to use alcohol and alcohol wipes. Um, the, the, wipes or pads that i have are actually for removing nail polish and the reason i like these compared to using paper towels or a cotton pad or something like that when you use paper towel or a cotton pad a lot of the times the little fuzzies like come off onto your item they catch on your engraves and they leave lint and dust all over your item and it's really hard to get it off so these little um pads that i have which i said i will link are like 
lint free i don't know guys they're made of a really good materials they work really really good um and that's what i use to clean off all my pencils i do not mask any of my pencils that i engrave i'll put a picture of my pencils for you guys to see but i just take the alcohol i have this i bought this little dispenser which i will also link and you take your little um your pad you press it down on the top and it pumps alcohol out to the top a lot of people like i said nail salons use these and you take it and then you wipe your pencil and you're good to go i find that's a lot easier than opening up the bottle of alcohol and dumping it and going over and over again if you're trying to do like i'll cut like 100 pencils at once and then clean them all while i watch tv or do whatever but this has been a lifesaver it's really really helped me because sometimes you'll find that masking is just not feasible or not worth it for certain things it's, it's just easier and quicker to clean the things afterwards and like i said um alcohol and these pads have been a lifesaver also some people i've heard have had really good luck with baby wipes so if you have a baby at home and have spare wipes might be worth trying out but this is the solution that i have that i really really like the next thing on my list is a small vacuum. Um, having a little vacuum can be so helpful when trying to clean out all these little pieces in your Glowforge um, and the dust and other things like that. I didn't have one for a long time and I kept saying I need to get one, I need to get one. My mom bought me one and I'm so glad that I have it. Um, sometimes when you cut things out, if you cut, um, for example, like a rattan pattern, there will be like a hundred plus pieces of wood that are left in the bed when you pull out your big final design. Um, and while the crumb tray kind of eats a lot of them and you can take it and dump it out somewhere, the crumb tray is really heavy and having that little vacuum can be super helpful. The next thing on my list, which is probably one of the most important tools is calipers. I did not have calipers for a while i used a kerf tool which is that you can see right here i cut one out with my laser and even when using the kerf tool i could never get my thicknesses right so maybe saying taylor why does it matter how thick my material is and why do i need calipers so when you are making something like a sign and you have it like this and you want to stand and you want the sign to click into that stand in order for it to click in, you need to know the thickness of your sign material so you know how big to cut your hole on the bottom, right? And calipers has been the only way for me to accurately do that where I'm not wasting materials, where my holes are never the right size and stuff like that. I bought this pair, it's a really affordable pair off of Amazon. Um, you can get ones that are metal and are a little bit more heavy duty, but I have had no issues with this one that I have. I love them, I use them every time that I make a new design. Um, they work really, really, really great. So highly, highly suggest those. I really think that it's a tool that you might have to spend $15 on now, but it can save you hundreds of dollars down the road because you won't be messing up so much material because your designs will be spot on every time because your measurements will always be right. The last thing that I wanna to talk to you guys about is actually a free thing, and that thing is cardboard. So when you are ordering all these things off of Amazon that I've suggested throughout this video, keep the boxes. Maybe you're saying, Taylor, why do I need cardboard? Well, remember how I talked about how you can cut things on MDF to kind of see, and that's a cheaper material to see if you want to make that in one of your more expensive materials, you can do the same thing with cardboard. Another really cool thing you can do with cardboard is make templates. So I, for example, will cut out a template. I'll set the cardboard in. I will cut out a template jig for all of my pencils that I want to engrave. Um, because when you stick a pencil, like line up a bunch of pencils and take them out, if you wanted to just repeat the same file with a new set of pencils, you are not gonna be able to get them lined up by just setting them in your glow forge. So if you put a piece of cardboard in, you cut out your jig of all your squares, you leave the cardboard in, and then put your pencils in all the little squares that you cut out on there, you can engrave and you can repeat that process over and over and over again. Trust me, you will go through so much cardboard. Um, cardboard is like crack for Glowforge people, okay? You really, really, really need it. I have a whole cupboard full of cardboard upstairs. Um, I have found so many uses for it. And also, even when I don't use the cardboard to use on my glowforge specifically i have found too that when i have custom orders that people ask me for i almost always have a box that's going to fit whatever item it is to ship it because i order off amazon and i kept it right so it's kind of twofold you can use it for shipping materials but also you can use it for your glowforge for all kinds of things trust me you do not want to um throw away all your boxes because you will regret it 
But uh, that is a wrap for all the things that I suggest you get for your Glow Forage. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. If you want to see more content like this, definitely subscribe. Um, yeah, like I said, if you want to save money, if you're thinking about buying your own Glow Forage, definitely check out my Glow Forage affiliate link below. And uh, I will see you guys next time.